Welcome to the first session of the May 2020 Iron Virtual Project Exhibition. We are happy to see so many people here today. This event will showcase the inspiring project work and outcomes achieved by Iron Classrooms around the world. Today, you will hear directly from educators and youth about their Iron project work and final products. Before we begin, let's go over a quick review of some of the features in the Zoom webinar space so all attendees can navigate and participate seamlessly. When typing a comment or question in the chat box, please set it to all panelists and attendees. We encourage lots of lively discussion in the chat throughout. Please go ahead and introduce yourself and share where you're from in the chat if you have not done so already. Make sure to type in any questions and comments you have, and we're going to try our best to address all questions as we go along. Also, please note that we are on Facebook Live. For those of you joining us through Facebook Live, feel free to add your comments and questions there as well. Also, you are welcome to share about the event on social media channels using the hashtags VPE2020, IRON, and IRONUSA. We are recording this webinar and we'll be sharing it in a follow-up email to all of you. However, feel free to also visit our website, YouTube, our Facebook page to watch it again. For those of you who are new to IRON, I'd love to share briefly about the work that we do. The International Education and Research Network, IRON, is the world's largest K-12 educational network that enables schools, teachers, and students to connect online and collaborate on projects that connect classroom learning with real-world issues. IRON was established in 1988 as a pilot project between 12 schools in New York and 12 schools in Moscow during the height of the Cold War. In the first collaborative project, students worked in both English and Russian on curriculum-based projects designed by participating teachers. They used the technologies available at the time before the internet to communicate with one another and build friendships. Our international network has grown exponentially since 1988, as has our ability to connect online and collaborate. Last project year, we connected almost 3,000 teachers and 74,000 students from 124 countries and global projects. There are more than 100 projects in IRON, all designed and facilitated by teachers and students to fit their curriculum and classroom needs and schedules. IRON projects are interdisciplinary and connect learners across different age groups, primarily K-12, and different subject areas, including creative and language arts, social sciences, and STEM. Participants select an online project and look at how they can integrate it into their classroom. Teachers and students connect in an online forum spaces to meet one another and get involved in ongoing project classrooms around the world who are working on the same project. In addition to connecting students learning with local issues and meeting specific curriculum needs, every project proposed by teachers and students in IRON has to answer the question, how will this project improve the quality of life on the planet? This vision and purpose is the glue that holds iron together, enabling participants to become global citizens who make a difference by collaborating with their peers from around the world. In 2015, iron mobilized its global network to realize the world's new 17 Sustainable Development Goals, STGs, a set of targets relating to future international development. Through collective learning and action, youth are making a difference through iron projects that meet the global SDGs, such as ending poverty, protecting the planet, and ensuring prosperity for all. We are excited to showcase five different iron projects during this exhibition. Girl Rising, Talking Kites Around the World, the Local History Project, the Olympic and Paralympics and Action Project, TOPA, and the Virtual Peace Education Camp. We have special guests joining us today to serve as your hosts and introduce each of the presentation. I'd like to welcome Greg Riva and his students Elena and Flynn, from St. Thomas the Apostle School in Illinois in the United States. I will hand it over to Greg to kick off our event. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alexander. Um, my name is Greg Riva. I'm a science teacher at St. Thomas the Apostle School in Crystal Lake, Illinois, and I'm happy, very happy to introduce the first uh, uh, presentation today, Girls Rising, and we'll be introducing um, two teachers, uh, Marie from Japan and Samay from Tunisia. And uh, we're welcome, welcome, and let's get started. If they're ready to begin.
Can I start now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to once again share with this collaboration. The Girl Rising Project. Where did you go? I'm sorry about that. We're bringing Mari right back. <laughs> there were technical, there was a small technical issue. She should be back in just a moment. Apologies, Mari. We lost you for a moment, but you can go ahead. Okay, okay. Okay, so the Girl Writing Project journeyed around the globe, witnessing the strength of the human spirit and the power of education to change the world. It aims to highlight the importance of quality education and gender equality, which are the SDGs goal four and five. Next, please. Next slide, please. Okay, the students were asked to pay close attention to the stories of various girls in the film Girl Rising and to think about the struggles of the girls in the film. In the first term of 2019, we had a wonderful collaboration with the students of Institute Santa Isabel in Formosa, Argentina. Next slide, please. Okay. The students in both countries participated in forum and dedicated to discussions about the film and share their thoughts and impressions of the film. Then we made presentation and shared them online. Uh, this year, at present, my students are taking lessons online because of the coronavirus. However, I learned it's suitable for the online lesson. We are watching the story of Suma in Cambodia and Soka in Nepal now. My students are posting their comments right now. So please join us if you and your students are interested in the issues of the quality education and the gender equality. Next slide, please. I would like to introduce another amazing experience. Last year, we also collaborated with students in Tunisia. What made us surprised most was the original film created by them. Their film inspired my students and made us to realize an equal environment for girls exist in Japan. Certainly, they encouraged us to change the world for the better by taking action. Now, I'd like to pass a baton to the teacher and the students in Tunisia. Next slide, please. And now Tunisian students are going to present. I think Tunisian students are now waiting to give presentation. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much, Mary. Well, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Sameh Nasser from Tunisia, an English teacher and an IR member. Uh, I'm so glad to be with you in such hard times of confinement that we are going through. Well, thanks for giving us the opportunity to exhibit our work with really special thanks for Mary, honestly, as she tried her best for us to join you. Well, uh, it's not strange for I earn to join educators and students from all over the world and working on I earn projects based on SDGs is really beneficial for all of us. Building a bridge, getting everyone to together. Well, my students and I have been working on Girl Rising since 2019, and it's been really full of discoveries and creativity. 
Well, uh, today I'm really going to give the floor to my students to, uh, for them to speak about their experience. So now we start with Asma, um, Sihem, please. Sihem, my student, is going to speak. Sihem. Um, it looks like only uh, one of your students is, is here at the moment. So if she is able to go, uh, I will keep an and eye All out of for them the are there. I'm checking with them. Are they are there. Okay, we will keep uh, trying to yeah. see. Thank you. See him, please. Well, if you haven't found her, Sameh can start. Sameh. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, you can start. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, you speak. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Sameh from Tunisia. I'm one of the members of English club in 9th April High School supervised by Mrs. Sameh Han Nasser. Working on a rising project, we had the idea of performing a film inspired from a real life story, someone who I know and who insists to keep her identity secret. So I will tell you about my experience in this film. I'm the heroine in this film entitled She Made It to the Top, playing the role of Sameh, the poor maid. I hope that one day I will make it to the top as the girl in the film. So performing the role of maid was so hard and that it was because I couldn't support my life as a maid staying at home and doing all the house cars. While acting, I felt like I'm really leaving this situation. I felt it when I cried. I really lived the moment I was in. Acting is not that easy. I will never forget this wonderful experience. We had so much fun when shooting. Sometimes we repeated the same sequences so many times. Honestly, I enjoyed every moment with my friends and especially with my teacher, Madam Sameh Nasser. So I'm so great, so great thanks to I Earn. We are really grateful to this wonderful organization which allowed us several opportunities and thanks to Girl Rising Project, we come up with our film, which, is, which we hope you will watch and use it uh, and use it. So it's available on YouTube. I earn have the link also. So I'm grateful for that and thank you for attention. Now Mesa. Now Mesa, please. Yes, Mesa, you can speak. Okay. You can speak. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Mesa and I'm also a member of the English club in 9th April School. Uh, first of all, girls' television is a very important subject to discuss nowadays uh, and to try our best to improve, of course. This is why we were inspired to, to produce a made to the top movie, which gave us the chance to discuss this matter with students from all over the world, students from Uganda, Spain, Morocco, uh, Palestine, and also in Japan. Interacting with these students uh, helped us discover more about girl situation in their country, also made us realize however developed the country might be, uh, inequality and sexism are still recognizable in different aspects. Uh, also, interacting with, the, with these students uh, helped us uh, know about each other, learn from each other, uh, know about each other's culture and also get closer to girls' situation and deprivation from different parts of the world. We could also make some good friends who we could interact and collaborate to make a difference, especially peers from Japan who are genuinely friendly and kind. Uh, this is it. Now I uh, give the start to my friend Asma. Yes, Asma, you can speak. Hello, everybody. Could you hear me? 
Yeah, it's okay. Okay, so uh, I'm Asma Khtari from Tunisia. 20 November 2019 was our first Zoom meeting with Japanese students with their teacher, Mrs. Mary, whom I really want to thank a lot for her support, great support and serious work. And as far as I can tell, everything went so well. We exchanged some questions about the project, the whole project, which is Go Rising. They asked us about the ghost situation in Tunisia and uh, some details of the film that we produced. She made it to the, to the top. We also knew about the ghost situation in Japan and how different girls' life is from a country to another. For me personally, and after uh, the Zoom meeting, I kept in touch with some of uh, the Japanese students uh, in social media, and now I do have a really good friend from Japan that really, really made me happy. The best moment I love was uh, when Mrs. Mary showed us the pictures of her students uh, watching our film, and uh, of course the time when we received the parcel from Japanese students uh, containing souvenirs. Finally, I hope all of you will watch and enjoy our real base, our real case based film, which we made after being inspired by Malala's film, Malala's case, and Suma's video. Great thanks to I Earn, I Earn, which allows the opportunity for people across the globe to collaborate and try to make the world a peaceful place to live in through the SDGs for sure. Thanks for your attention, and now I leave the floor for my friend Sihem. See him, please. See him. I don't believe see him is on. I'm so sorry. Um, if someone she else is could. on, please. See him is on. But she doesn't appear here. She tells me that she hears us and she is on. If she is signed on with a different name, I can look for that name, but I don't see her see name. Her. I'm so sorry. See her. You couldn't find her? I'm sorry, but we can't find Siham. If you if she has a different name that she signed in as, uh, we can look for that. Just a second, please. Just a second. If she's there, maybe she can uh, raise her virtual hand so we can see her that way. Uh, she said that she can hear us. She hears us, but she is, she doesn't appear. I don't know why. I'm so sorry, but if one of you would be able to okay. continue, that would be no great. problem. Ask ma. Okay. So would you please carry on? Okay, could you hear me? Yes, yes, here. Okay, I want to thank, uh, thank again uh, uh, the English club and I earn platform. I participated in uh, the, global, uh, the global project Go Rising. In the process of this project, we made uh, plenty of uh, researchers. We discovered more about the dark side of the world where people, mainly girls, are deprived of their uh, their rights and suffer from poverty and inequality. Uh, girls' situation around the world has been improving and girl rights in the project contributed, uh, contributed to, do, uh, to do that. Uh, greatly, in the, uh, in the years ago, we barely talked about such topics, but now we are celebrating knowledge with students from all over the world, so like, uh, like we did with Palestine, Uganda, Morocco, and of course Japan, thanks to Mrs. Mary. Uh, so we learned about the world, and the greatest part we learned with the, with the world also, this exchange, broke down walls between us, highlights the beauty of the diversity, proves that, uh, that we are together through the, uh, through, uh, through the state of uh, humanity 
uh, humanity really taking with for a foreign student to, uh, taught, uh, taught me and taught us to see the world with the new lenses and uh, inspire me to keep uh, making a difference through such projects. That's all? Yes. Thank you. So thank you everyone for your attention and I hope that you liked what my students said. Uh, it has been really great pleasure contributing to the Rising project and um, see you next time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you to all the students and teachers involved with the um, Girl Rising project. And now I'd like to uh, pass it off to uh, Flynn, who's going to be our, our co-host for and introduce the next project. Flynn? Uh, thank you, Mr. Eva. So in the Talking Kites uh, Around the World project, um, students make kites that depict their dreams for a better world. Um, they fly them on the same day as a tribute to Janusz Korczak, who advocated on behalf of children during the Holocaust. Um, next slide. Uh, and I'm excited to introduce Dolphin Lin, a teacher from Taiwan, who has been an iron for 10 years and teaches seventh grade. I will now hand it to Miss Lin. Next slide. Oh, wait. I have to give a short talk before the video. Great, you can go ahead, Dolphin, thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my English name is Dolphin and I'm a teacher in Taiwan teaching English. Um, I've been in IRN for 10 years. My students are seventh graders now and this was my second time participating in Talking Kites Around the World project um, to learn about children's right and Janusz Korzak. Um, I let my students watch some video clips about uh, child laborers, uh, Syrian children's life in refugee camps, um, child bride, and etc. Um, we had a deep discussion, and my students realized how blessed they are. Uh, we read two picture books. Um, one is um, The Whispering Town, uh, written by Jennifer Albergram. And the other one is The Champion of Children, the story of Janusz Kozak, um, written by um, Tomek uh, Bogoski. Um, we also had a discussion about Holocaust and watched a movie called uh, Schindler's List. Um, after all the teaching, we ended up creating our own kites and flew them on March 20th. And believe it or not, um, for most of my students, that was their first time flying kites. Um, you could tell how excited they were um, from the video clips that I will show you later. Um, what made our project outcome special this year was that most students around the world couldn't go to school and flew the kites due to the COVID-19. Um, we were lucky because schools in Taiwan only closed for two weeks um, in early February. And due to keeping the coronavirus under control, um, we were able to um, maintain normal life. Um, another thing made this project special for us was that my students got chances to share this project and had cultural exchange with um, Israeli students with Zoom meeting. And thanks to Ms. Rudy and Ms. Yao, um, my students really had a good time talking with um, Israeli students. Um, we also contributed an article to a nationwide newspaper in our country um, to share this wonderful experience with all the students in Taiwan, and it was published on uh, April 9th. Um, and here is a short video clip for this project, and please watch. Um, Nico, would you please uh, play the video for me? Thank you. 
Thank you so much. That's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you, Ms. Lin, for such a wonderful presentation. Next slide, please. Uh, the next project being presented is the Local History Project, in which students research the history of their communities and share their findings with their global peers. Next slide, please. I'm delighted to introduce Alfia Sibagatelina, a teacher from Russia who has been in iron for five years yes. uh, and teaches kindergarten. I will now hand it to Ms. Sibagatelina. Yes, hello, dear friends. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. I am facilitator of the local history project. This project was created by my sister, Rima Zhukova. Uh, she died one year ago and uh, she actively worked at the Iron with and went to the conference. Uh, can we see the video about my sister? No, this is this one. Okay. No. Okay, um, we see video about my sisters in the next time. <clears throat> Local history is a, um, is a history, it is a history of the native land and the life and the way of life of our families. Uh, students talk about the native uh, land, about the cultural tradition of their people and show us essays, presentation, photos, or drawing uh, on the forum. We also meet at video conferences. In the project, uh, our children, uh, children from um, six years to 18 years old. Uh, the project is working from September 15 to June. Uh, this week, I worked for the first time in the project. I, no, I did it. Uh, students from Belarus, Ufa, uh, Moldova, Moldova, and of course Taiwan took part. Uh, students talk about the school in the presentation, show videos about our country, about the country's culture. It was very uh, interesting. Uh, can we see this video? Yes. Ну, только что
it is my students. Uh, my students are seven years old. Uh, I work in the ki kindergarten in the Russian city Vyborg. We already know a lot about um, about other cities thanks thanks uh, to our project. Uh, at the video conference, we learn dancing together and uh, they teach uh, alphabet together with students from from Taiwan. Uh, I want to say you come to our project and uh, tell us about your school and uh, your country. Our friendship will keep the peace. Thank you. Yes, it is my sister Rima, Rima Zhukova. Um, uh, thank you, Mrs. Subakatalina, for your very meaningful presentation. I will now hand it to my classmate, Elena, to introduce the next presentation. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Flynn. The TOPA, which stands for the Olympics and Paralympics in Action Project, aims to foster friendship, a spirit of encouragement, and unity in diversity through learning about the Olympic and Paralympic Games especially their values of welcoming and involving host nations with visiting athlete nations. Next slide, please. I'm pleased to introduce Mayumi Takizawa, a teacher from Japan who teaches first through fourth graders and has been an iron for three years. I now hand it to Ms. Takizawa. Next slide, please. Mayumi, you can go ahead and start when you're ready. Okay. Can you can you see me? Okay. So, okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Mayumi Takizawa from Tokyo, Japan. And I usually teach at the two universities, but sometimes go to Magome Elementary School as a guest teacher. And uh, work on the IAM project as an extracurricular activity. I have been working on the Olympic Paralympic educational activities since Tokyo started its educational program in the year of Rio 2016. And I thought Ion was the best place to do these activities. That's why I launched Topa Project last year with Seri Hasegawa, the other co-facilitator from Tokyo. Next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. As I introduced at the beginning, Topa aims to foster friendship, spirit of encouragement, and unity in diversity through learning about Olympic and Paralympic Games, especially their various warmly welcoming and involving host nations with visiting athlete nations. Next, please. Next slide, please. Okay. Topa has five activity topics. Olympic, Paralympic various, as I said, and creating charting posters and the encouragement videos is required as a key activity. And Olympic, Paralympic sports and athletes, of course, and the Olympic Paralympic design, such as emblems and mascots, Olympic Paralympic music, and Olympic Paralympic sustainability. Next, please. Next, please. Okay. Uh, this time, 32 groups from 16 countries have been working on this project for Tokyo 2020, but it is postponed to 2021 due to the pandemic. Next, please. Next, 
Next slide, please. Okay. However, we believe that it is time to encourage each other, no more than ever, to overcome this challenging time together. So we will hold the Topa Global Exhibition on June 27th, 2020 to display our going project outcomes for now. A part of the project outcomes will be introduced here. Next, please. Okay. This is a cheering poster created by Magome Elementary School students. You can see three words, excellence, friendship, and respect. They are Olympic values. Um, not yet. The two national flags, flags are Russia and Japan, because Russia is one of our partner countries in this project. Actually, the Russian teacher, his name is Arifia, who was the presenter, not yet, please, okay, uh, the, uh, uh, who was the presenter before this presentation? But a coincidence. So today we are very happy to meet for the first time here. Students learn some encouragement words in their partner's language too. You can see them in Russian and Japanese. Students draw pictures of their original mascots as well as the, the Tokyo 2020 official mascots, Mirai, Toa, and Sumiti, with their wishes. Please look at the pictures of children holding their hands at the bottom. They say, hello, or nice to meet you to their new friends. Next, please. Next slide, okay. This cheering poster was creating four Paralympic values. You can see four words in the center, courage, determination, inspiration, and equality. Our city is one of the host cities for Brazil at Tokyo 2020. So these encouragement words are written in Portuguese and Japanese. Next, please. Next slide, please. Okay. Now let me introduce Together Hand in Hand Campaign 2020. As you saw, especially elementary school students can start with this activity my happy face and words to introduce themselves and to encourage each other. Okay, next please, okay. Right. Okay, thank you very much, next please. Okay, hang in there together, we'll be all right. Next please. Okay, first we plan to have our students united with their drawings just before Tokyo 2020, like this. Next slide, please. Okay. Actually, this picture was taken before the pandemic. Next, please. Okay, but now we are featuring this activity as a campaign to overcome this challenging time together. This drawing came from China after the pandemic occurred. That's why the student sets together create a better world wearing a mask. Thank you, his teacher, Shi Huan for sending us such an insightful drawing. Next slide, please. OK, 
Okay, next please. Now, students' drawings are coming from all over the world, like this. How nice to see our students holding their hands with their happy faces and words, even virtually. I really appreciate their teachers' hard work during this difficult time. Thank you, Manuela from Portugal, Arifia from Russia, and Tavin from Nepal. Tavin sent us more than 100 drawings the other day. Thank you very much. So not only students, but also teachers can connect themselves to help each other. Next, please. Okay, for further information, please visit the Topo News or Teachers Forum. Next, please. Now, the Olympic flame is staying in Japan in order to become the light at the end of this tunnel in 2021. So let's believe this hope lights our way with a lot of smiles and laughter of children around the world. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Ms. Takizawa for her amazing presentation. Um, the last presentation, er, next slide please. The last presentation is on the Virtual Peace Education Camp Project. This project invites children to think about what peace means to them and where they feel peaceful. It nurtures empathy and the activities encourage students to think about what they can do to build a more peaceful world. Next slide, please. I'm delighted to introduce Tamar Lolishvili, a teacher from Georgia who teaches 9th through 11th grade and has been an iron for five years. I will now hand it to Ms. Loli Shvili. Next slide, please. Uh, yes. Today we're going to talk about the book, Peace Education and Values and Informal Education and the project, which has great importance for me and my friends as they turn out to be really engaging, inspiring, and cognitive. The book that we're going to talk about shows us that peace and education are inseparable aspects of civilization. No civilization is truly progressive without education, and no education system is truly civilizing unless it is based on the universal principles of peace. This book contains 22 planned lessons, situations, and examples which are related to day-to-day -day interactions and activities of school life that make it meaningful. Now let's talk about the first lesson, conflicts and decision making. The figure that we see here is a conflict tree, which has three most important parts. First, causes as the roots. Second, the core problem as a trunk. And the third, the effects as branches. So it helps us identify the three most important issues, which is causes, the core problem, and the effects. It also helps us distinguish uh, between the core problem and the causes. And after we find the causes and the core problem, we can start thinking about solving this problem and making right decisions. Now, Mary is going to talk about decision making and why it is so essential for solving conflicts. Hello, my name is Maria Megalatze and today I'm going to talk about decision making and strategies. Have you ever wondered how many times a person makes decision in a day? Well, answer may shock you because a person on average makes 20,000 decisions in a day. It may be super hard or super easy. Now I want to talk about seven stages of decision making. Step one, identify the decision. Step two, gather relevant information. Step three, uh, identify the alternatives. Step four, weigh the evidence. Step uh, five, choose among alternatives. Step six, take action. And finally, step seven, review your uh, decision and its consequences. 
They are individual pair and group decision making uh, strategies. Uh, virtual, peace camp, uh, virtual peace education camp really gave us opportunity to work well in a team in the future. It consists democratic, uh, dictatorial, uh, consultative. Uh, group consultative strategies are worth considering. Uh, I want to add that uh, there are um, other ways uh, of decision making uh, when it comes to uh, individual and pair making decisions. Negotiation and mediation. My friends will tell exactly what these are. And finally, I want to say that making decisions made me who I am. It helped me a lot and it also made me go through so much. Without decisions, we would not even have ability to see or have our personal opinions. Decisions, uh, and maybe I will sound a little extra, but without decisions, the world would not even exist. The second lesson is about leadership and power. Hello, I'm Giga from school IHS. I want to talk about what I learned while I participated in this project and how I use it. When I think about values of virtual peace education camp, first thing that comes to my mind is leadership. We face it everywhere and any time. Leading a team sometimes is not as easy as you would expect, but it's a lot easier when you know how to be a good leader. Virtual peace education camp taught me what's necessary for being a good leader, like listening to others, sharing my opinion, how to come up with one, best solution, and many more. I have always planned what will I and my team members do. Knowing how to be a good leader always helps me in different situations. For example, while doing class group activities or even participating in international projects. Last year, I participated in a competition called Leonardo da Vinci. Its main rules are to create three-person team, even something, describe what can it do with the presentation and show it to others. My team members chose me as team's leader. I was sure I could lead my team because I think I knew how to be a good leader. As I remember from Virtual Peace Education Camp project, I always try to power with and be responsible for er everything that happened in my team. Finally, we finished project, which was musician robot and played on a xylophone. We ex exhibited it and got third place from almost 30 projects. All values that I got from Virtual Peace Education Camp helped me in my life especially one that I talked about, the ability of being a good leader. The third lesson is negotiation. My name is Aryan Zemilaze, and today I'm going to talk about my experience about negotiations. First of all, negotiation is a, a discussion between two parts to find a fair solution. Uh, it can be used with anyone, and it is one of the best ways to solve a problem. Uh, and this project helped me a lot to see. In past, I have uh, used negotiation to solve my own problems, but I did not know it had this official name. From my experience, it is one of the most effective ways to solve a problem. Um, in this project, I learned uh, that there are some steps that are necessary uh, that you follow uh, to um, negotiate. And if you follow all the steps, you will have the best result. Uh, don't forget, first you will have to decide to negotiate, then you will have to um, prepare, then you will have to negotiate then um, execute and finally follow up. Um, I think that negotiation is uh, really good because it can solve uh, easy problems like an argument with your friend uh, or more serious problems uh, like disagreement between countries. Uh, and it avoids uh, a winner lose, um, a winner lose uh, situation because uh, you both sacrifice something, uh, but you get something uh, much better from it. The fourth lesson is mediation. The aim of this lesson is to learn how to act as an outside mediator, someone who listens to those with problems and help them to solve it by helping them with their own consensus or solution. Now, Greta is going to talk about if practicing mediation will help us solve conflicts or make it easier to reach peace. A single young woman with two children needs urgent medical treatment. She can't go to work because her job is closed because of COVID-19. Added to this is the problem that she can't even pay the rent for two months and the owner calls her to vacate the apartment. Before this period came, she would send her children to a private school. Due to non-payment of tuition fees for two months, the principal requests the transfer of documents to another school. The role of mediator is very important here. She is the third person who is not involved in the problem and she attempts to help the other solve the problem. 
during mediation, there is not win-lose or lose-lose solution. There is win-win solution. Hello, my name is Barbara Kobahide. I'm 14 years old. I study in school IHS and I have been participated in virtual peace education camp for three years. I have to admit that it developed lots of values. And today I'm going to talk about one of them, which is empathy. Since we are children, known as global citizens, change makers in the world, and leaders in kindness, one of the most important things that we have to develop is empathy. Empathy is the ability to emotionally understand what other people feel, see things from their point of view, and imagine ourselves in their place. Essentially, it is putting ourselves in someone else's position and feeling what they must be feeling. When we saw another person suffering, we might be able to instantly envision ourselves in the other person's place and feel sympathy for what they are going through. Fortunately, empathy is a skill that we can learn and strengthen. If anyone would like to build their empathy skills, there are a few things to do. First, work on listening to others without interrupting them. Second, pay attention to body language and other types of nonverbal communication. Third, Try to understand people even if we do not agree with them. Having a great deal of empathy makes us concerned for the well-being and happiness of others. It also means, however, that we can sometimes get overwhelmed, burned out, or even overstimulated from always thinking about other people's emotions. Thank you very much for listening. Wish you all happiness and health. Mara, if you'd like to say anything, uh, you can go ahead. Thank you, Iron Community, for this opportunity. Thank you, my students, and thanks to my school, Gymnasium Maya Jess, who is always supporting and who is always promoting peace through education. Thank you. Thank you to Ms. Lolishvili for a thought-provoking presentation and to all our amazing presenters. I will now hand it back to Alexander to bring the exhibition to a close. Next slide, please. Thank you everyone for joining us here today. Please make sure also to join us for our next exhibition, which is happening at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so in about uh, four hours. Um, we are excited to have students and educators present five more amazing iron projects, which you can see on the program on the slide. Next slide, please. Thank you. So this concludes the first session of the virtual project exhibition. I want to thank again all our pr presenters today for sharing their incredible projects. They were amazing. And I also want to thank our hosts for making this event run so smoothly. So thank you. Um, thank you so much also to our audience for joining us and actively participating in this discussion. If you're interested in learning more about IRON and how to join, please feel free to visit our website, or you can also email us at membership at us.iron.org. 